two things about SUVs. We're okay. going to start driving more of them. Yes. And they will be coming because this actually comes up on the podcast a lot. It does. It actually is in the category of people who have families and you've got to have an SUV and you might not be able to have a fun car. What it's, is the closest yeah. SUV yeah, 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 to yeah. anything fun? You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. The I have to have more than five seats. And the question is always, guys, what's more, what's a seven-seater that's fun? And we can yes. pretty much say, you gotta, you got to divorce yourself from fun once you get to seven seats. It, you, it's, yes. You're really limited. What, what I find in this category, I love that you brought this up, because what I find in this category is what you're actually looking for now is a car that does everything you need it to do and has the right amount of seats and all the right amenities and then is surprisingly good to drive. It's not fun, <laughs> not fun first. It's all the other stuff first because it has to be. Is that a and then you go, glass of fun? Do you, is there fun exactly. around? We're in search of fun. And then you go, you know what? This is pretty good to drive. Yeah. It's that kind of headspace. Well, that's exactly my second point, and that is bringing the any preconceived notion about it's a three row SUV, mm -hmm. so throw out everything about handling or fun or anything like that. So we're just entering, we're on interstate, we're just entering a series of curves that we thought yeah. would be kind of, yeah. you know, dynamic. It's got the this, super handling, super califragilistic handling or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. It is Acura's accurate, super it. handling all wheel drive. This is the, by the way, this is the loaded version of the MDX. Yes, it this is. This is the A-spec. There is one above this with hybrid with it's electric motors. It's the sport motors, hybrid. It but doesn't have that. This is the nearly 300 horsepower V6. It has a nine speed transmission. <laughs> it does share this engine and I believe it or not transmission with the pilot under uh, underneath it. Yes, but it does. This is the super duper version of the MDX. It starts, starts at 44, almost 45 grand. Yeah. As specced here, this is $56,000. So you spent some real money here. Okay, so this is not the entry level. It's not but even the still. second notch of SUV land. Yeah, you know, you you're need right, just you're right. family hauler. And it's difficult to come at this price or this car and say, well, it's totally worth it because if you can't afford something, it's not worth it. So, <laughs> I mean, is it a good value? Well, my budget doesn't go that high, so I have <laughs> I mean, no idea. Yeah, we, we can't just come away and say that, but for what you're getting, it is impressive. So we'll start with completely, the powertrain. Yeah. As Todd's saying, it's the 290 horsepower V6, so we're at altitude. It is naturally aspirated, yeah. and I'm pretty impressed, but I think that's because of all the gears. It kind of leaps off the line because we've got a million little tiny short gears Nine to get speeds. the car going. Yes. And it is kind of fun, as far as the powertrain is concerned, it no longer has a gear lever. And I feel like on any SUV, that is kind of the way you interact with the car. That's that's my connection. It's like how yeah. you know, dogs bite everything and babies put everything in their mouth. That's how they're relating to their world. This is how I relate to my you world. You relate with, through the gear shift lever. I do, lever. I like, I'm backing out of the driveway, I'm like, I, uh, I'm it's just, surprised it's because buttons. you're because you're the more the tech guy. Than <laughs> I know, me. I they, know. They've removed all buttons. Here, they didn't do. Look, I'm going to call it out right now, even though it's not in this piece. They didn't do the GM thing and use window switches on the dash. <laughs> this is actually got, got a handful of extra. <laughs> what should we do? We'll just put a, we'll make a we'll we'll stick it in right here. That'll be fine. No, but these actually are dedicated switches, yes. and the, you look at it at first and go, "What the heck's going on?" And then it becomes intuitive. Honestly, the stuff yeah. starts to make some sense. And what I do like about it, and I'm a, I kind of with you. I like having a, a gear shift lever. <laughs> Backing out of my Wait, where's my but oh yeah but honestly right. these are dedicated for this purpose you can tell as soon as you look you're like oh they've actually thought this through and they thought it through well i'm actually quite impressed with it i am too each function is a different feel the park button is a different button a different shape than the drive button mm -hmm. than the reverse button they're all mm -hmm. very different so you have to be deliberate they're not just four or five buttons of the same kind which is the ergonomics and design coming into it's play. It's perfect because then you can learn to do it without yes. looking at it. Because yes. you can reach out and you'll be able to feel that's what that is. So reverse, you actually pull with a couple of fingers. You pull back mm -hmm. as if you're going into reverse versus the drive button, which you can switch between drive and sport mode. And I just like to have sport mode on so I can see that indeed I'm in gear nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But Not yes, sure we needed that many, but there it is. The buttons, I, there is no reason to have a gear lever anymore. In modern cars and electric cars from here on out, I cannot make a case for having a lever. I unless like it's it, a though. Manual. Unless, unless it's a it's manual, manual, then it, of course it has well, that one. this is but the Porsche 992. They're no agreed, longer offering agreed. the now shift like mode switch. here. It is. It's just to uh, put okay. it in gear. Everything yeah. else is with paddles. Yeah. Same thing with this car. Mm -hmm. It's just, you've got the paddles, and I've just got buttons, and I... I Okay, I 
I can't make a case for it. Okay. I, All right. I can't come up All with right. any reason except I like it. Just, <laughs> you like okay, to have one, wait, even wait, though wait. it's not. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I hear you. Okay. I hear you. All right. So this powertrain, like I said, pretty spry off the line. And as I was in one of our favorite corners in Kimball Junction. Okay. Yeah. I was coming onto the freeway when I thought. And this was in some muck. I mean, we've obviously got a beautiful day today, but this was in the muck and the gook and, and all the. And it's a press car in the winter with all season tires on it, which is not the right combination. It's not ideal. By the way. And I thought, all my right. driveway's been difficult in these press <laughs> yeah, cars. But yeah, separate thing. It has been. So I thought, I wonder if I can take this guy ahead of me. And it's not the feel of the handling that is super. It is the all wheel drive system that yeah. I believe has its roots in the 1997 Prelude SH that has now been developed. And proliferated in all the MDXs all and all, all the Acura cars. Yeah. And so it's it doesn't have a center diff. It has this torque distribution unit that distributes torque to the but that's a good rear name diff. For it. That's excellent. I'm really glad that's what it does. But so it's also front wheel drive bias. Front wheel drive yeah. bias. It's like 70 30 depending mm -hmm. on what's going on. So it throws power to the rear diff and then it's got a clutch pack that distributes power side to side. It's set up for the lack of understeer, and I thought. I can take this guy, and I did, yeah, and I'm in a seven-passenger, yep. three-row SUV. Yep. This car does not drive the size of what the description is. Agreed. Agreed. It drives far smaller, and I think that's what shocked you and I. Agreed. All right, so this car has the A-spec package, which is pretty much trim except for the 20-inch wheels and tires. Okay. It's mostly cosmetic, and it says door garnish. It has door garnishes with a -spec. Is that the official they, PR it, term? They said garnish. You guys use the word garnish, Acura. <laughs> Thank you for the car, but door, garnish. Door we garnish? With, we went with that. <laughs> a little relish <laughs> right there so when you grab the door handle. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So it's on the steering wheel, and this car, as a seven-passenger car, has no business having a steering wheel as good as this is. Interesting. Okay. And right. it says, we build the NSX. By the way... It, it speaks oh, just a little. It's, it's a sculpted it's steering wheel. It's not necessarily. It's just a little bit of a reminder, and it's it's along the lines of you know I'm I'm thinking of a commercial that the person driving the blue electricity goes around them, and then suddenly they're driving the NSX, and they're suddenly oh, in they the sports think they car, are. and then you know it goes back, and the kids are screaming again, and life happens again. By the way, Acura, if you do that commercial, you owe him a royalty. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, that that happens. Yeah, I, I'm just telling you because of anything that connects you to the feel of whatever else Acura builds. Okay. They're All reminding right. you through the steering wheel. Yeah. This yeah. this sculpted steering wheel, it feels great. It's firm and crisp. And you'd think it's just a steering wheel. It doesn't have any business being in this car. OK. All right. It's well, I actually feeling. think I think the seats are better than a seven-seat car typically has in the front, too. I think the seats are excellent as far as these front seats they are concerned. They now, are. here is a scourge in the industry in general. Because most of us are car journalists and we never get out of the front seats, most people's <laughs> second row, and I'm talking, I don't care the car, I don't care the type of car, most times second rows aren't very comfortable. These are actually decent. Yeah. Now, yeah, I will say, this is not a big SUV. When you think about seven-seat SUVs, True. I typically think of a massive footprint. This is not very big. In fact, I think it's about the size of the current Cayenne. I didn't check the numbers, but it, but visually, okay. it's about the size of the current Cayenne. Maybe a tiny it bit bigger. It drives small. It does drive small, which is very impressive, and it's great for handling. The downside is, yes, it is seven seats. No, they're not big. <laughs> and if you put them up, the cargo room behind it, I mean, you're shopping like... Fiesta STs, like the subcompact area, that's the amount of hatch space that is left if you have the third row up. But yeah, I think, yeah. but here's where I think this shines though, because if you're a family where you only use the seven seats every now and then, it's you and your significant other and two, possibly three kids. This is perfect sure. because you won't need that back row except for every now and then. And then when you pull it up, it's probably because family's in town or you took an extra kid's friend. And so you probably have less cargo and you have more people. I think this is an either or car as far as those back seats are concerned. Okay, so the only circular 
button on this gear shift lever is the drive button, mm -hmm. which is great. You do you, you make a great point. Every one of these buttons is a slightly different texture, it's a slightly different shape. Yeah. So you really could learn it very quickly and just be like, okay, I know what I'm doing without even looking, which is what you actually want when you interact with it. I with still want to like. Wh where's I know, the, I know I you do, but yeah, not happening. Uh, not happening. We're not in that world anymore. That's why they have you. They give you such a great steering wheel because that's the only thing left to touch. Fair, fair. I mean, we're all touching everything else in here, but because we're car journalists, we just what you is all this, are not. What does this <laughs> feel like? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you're Wait, never gonna do. You only were gonna touch that uh -huh. when it got goo on it from one of your kids. That's the reason you're gonna be like, I can't get that no, off. No, you're yet. gonna you're gonna that's take why. it to be detailed and be like, I don't even want to <laughs> touch that thing. Like, just I don't know what that out. is. That was goo from I don't know. That was lunch three days ago and we need to get that <laughs> off of there. Something like that. Yeah. Well, that actually brings up another thing. These seats are beautiful. They're they are. They're nice to look they at. Are. They're Alcantara. And, I, and when I first got this car, it was a really snowy day. And I opened up. Now, I know, I, look, I know Alcantara is made to, to withstand elements. That's kind of the genius of it. It looks like suede, but it can handle the elements. I know that, that the works. The cows spend much of their time out, outdoors. They do. They do. So, they but, but this is this is Alcantara, so I know it can handle it, but there's still something in me, like like a gut reaction when I opened the door and a bunch of snow fell in and landed. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh no. And then I realized, no, no, it's okay, because they look like really nice seats that shouldn't shouldn't have any just ever. Soaked everything right up, didn't it? And that's the thing, though. If you, But I, I am going to wonder, if you have little kids... What kind of cover are you going to want on that back seat? Because you're just you're you're just going to feel bad for the car. Just a can of Rhino Liner to spray Something. everything I, and cover it all. This up. is what happens. It is though. really nice. Kids and dogs and but it, it, it all of these materials that you actually interact with. That that's the key thing. We as journalists get goofy and we touch everything. We touch all the stuff you're never going to touch. But the stuff you interact with in this car is very nice. It is, and that's again part of the A spec package. The red trim, the seats themselves, they look a little bit flat, but they're actually better than they would suggest. They're actually great. Long distance, there's a lot of space in the back, just right behind, not the third row, as we've already established that. Third row, is, is that is a kid's the second only row. row. Yeah. Okay, so styling. Let's touch on styling, both interior and exterior. First of all, the exterior, we are finally past the rhinoplasty phase, even though we're in the third the, generation. The chrome beak, the parrotfish. The Acura Parrotfish. It was, That's really what we're talking it about. It was yeah. not good. Yeah. So the third generation when it came out had that, but now we're in the revised styling. I think it looks great. We're I mean, in the Acura really Shield used. era. It's, it's like yes. the Shield for yes. Audi, but now this is the Acura Shield. Yes, for yeah. sure. So you'll also notice the rear doors appear a lot longer, but I was kind of a nerd and I actually measured them because I was curious and I never <laughs> did you actually never get a done tape measure out for rear doors I did because I wanted to know okay All I've right. never done this by All the way right, it'll probably never happen again so don't I worry I doubt that it's, if it's happened once <clears throat> the precedent has been set it's, it's a lot longer Go on. usually the people measuring things at the car shows are the aftermarket people making the things for lots the, of times yes anyway I, I was just curious <laughs> because it's it's a huge door. It almost looks like a minivan door, and yeah. it just leaves you a lot of space to get in. So that's yeah. why this is such a great minivan alternative. I agree it with that. I agree with that. It's a huge door, but it opens mm -hmm. normally. And, and I will and they, say... They've done it with the proportions. It yes. doesn't look ungainly like, what it have you done? It doesn't look big. Yeah. Park this next to what you think of when you think 7 seat, which is probably yeah. Expedition or Yukon or Suburban. Park this next to one of those and ask somebody, does that have 7 seats? And I bet you they'll say, no, it's a 5-seater. Right. Because it right. just hides it so well. Now, of course, the sacrifice is that really small third row. I will say, though, they did also think, I do think it's a trade-off discussion. I think they are looking at this car and going, most people that will buy this will either need seats or cargo and not both. When you need seats okay. and cargo, okay. you've got to get a Suburban. You've got to get an Expedition. You've got to get so. a big boy with the yeah. huge back. This is an either-or scenario. And along those lines, works this second row, if you have to put people in the back, you can slide it forward like three or four inches. The second yeah. row can be slid yeah, way forward. Now, you're going to end up in a big like UN negotiation about who gets leg room. The second row, third row. No, I need another notch. Wait, that There's hurts my be ankles. Document signed. Seriously, be lines drawn. Brexit will have been easier. Okay, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. But at least you can make the option. That's sure, good. Sure. All right. So interior styling. I'm thinking this will be good on your eyes for quite a while. Yeah. And the cool thing is, you get two screens in this car. One is just for, you know, the Sirius XM radio. You've got all your controls on here, and you think just going digital buttons. There's a few. Mm -hmm. I thought the, the controls were really intuitive. I, I thought it was I agree. pretty great. And then, of course, you have the second nav screen under the hood, which is kind of cool, so there's no well, glare. Well, it's, it's also a nav screen that's not an iPad stuck into the dash. Yes, that, that is integrated. It isn't it's common totally anymore, and this is actually yeah. well integrated. Now, you do get this extra hump, but you know what? I think 
it's visually more interesting. It's easy to yeah. see. It's visually more interesting. You don't have any of the glare issues. This is still Honda and Acura are still hanging on to buttons. Now, I personally like buttons, but most everybody <laughs> like else buttons. is getting rid of buttons. This still has quite a few buttons here in What's the center console. Like? <laughs> well, oops, that was GM you in the '90s. <laughs> all the buttons that they were all rounded. Every one of them been slightly inflated. It's just like just yeah, sanding each one. So I like that button, but what if you inflated it like fifty yeah. percent? Just think of it like a balloon. No, we're we're past that now, which is good. <laughs> all right, so this rides really great independent suspension and I can confirm there's no video evidence other than me telling you that it is a daily triple sort of car can you really of course you can I, well, of course I can you confirm can. this yeah. well but that's a good engine you're, though it's a great engine yeah. you're looking for some kind of ah the kids are dropped off from school I've just I've got to get it out of my system you actually can with this car you know this has got it's got multiple modes it's got dynamic <laughs> modes and again MDX yeah <laughs> <laughs> MDX, you're in jail. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay. But no, it's got this dynamic mode button, and again, that yes. is on the yes. gear gear uh, selector here. I can't even call it a gear shift. The it's gear the selector, but it is a separate. It the, is a separate button again yeah. than all the rest of them. And you you do have look. I've got comfort, yeah. normal, and sport. And of course, we are driving it in sports. Just but break the button off with a screw. But you know what? Honestly, I, I'm a guy. Look, I drive sports cars. I have a Cayenne. Yeah. I, I, I like things to have a fairly firm ride. Yeah. This in sport mode isn't the least bit punishing. You would be fine with it. Yeah. If you are doing the long drive and you feel like, you know what? I just don't need that much. The comfort mode is just downright lush. Now it's also a bit wallowy, but of course you expect that yeah. in corners. I mean, if you've got a lot of people, just you know, grandma's with you, and you just really <laughs> want comfort. Yeah, you can actually do it, but I never left it out of, I never changed out of sport mode, actually, and it was great. I'm, I'm in comfort diving my way into these uh, I-80 uh, corners right, here in a minute. Are you sure so about we'll, that? We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll brace ourselves. Okay. We'll be fine. I'm not worried about it gripping <laughs> because we actually don't have snow on the road. If it was all seasons it was snow on the road, we'd be <laughs> doing some really careful stepping about now. We're not doing that. Seriously, I do think this is leading towards something reminding you that Acura builds the NSX. In a slight it. way. There's not, yeah, there's there's not, not much similarities. Here, there's a bit it's of it. just yeah. that connection, you know, back when... You know, Acura was putting Ferrari on notice back in the days of the grunge era and, you know, early 90s. They were, you know, Acura bringing it to Ferrari for a few decades now. <laughs> and now we build SUVs. So I'm in comfort mode and everything has got a delay. The gas pedal gained a delay. <laughs> the steering gained a delay. Now, that's, sure. that's it's fine. It's Please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a slight. I'm just talking about the difference because everything I do now, like that, I, yeah. I turn in... Then the body follows. It. Yeah, of course. You see, see the you body roll. Then... You see me turn, and now the car is yeah. turning. So, I mean, yes, I'm a guy that I would drive this. I'm going to get there right now. I would drive this in sport mode sure. all the time. Sure. Just because I don't like to have that slack. Yeah. But yeah. you have the option. And it isn't, also, by the way, it's not an eco mode. It's not like eco comfort in sport. It's comfort normal in sport. Now, that, maybe that's really slitting it <laughs> fine. <laughs> but honestly, slicing it down. Uh, all of them are great. Sport would be where I'd be all the time, though. And by the way, hmm. why you were talking about the NSX? Why why does this car sound this good? Hang on, oh, hang on just yes. a second. Hang on. Great I, what, point. what gear am I in? I'm in I'm in twelve. No, I'm well, actually nine. I was in nine. Okay, hang <laughs> nine on. Choices. I'm in four now. Let's go to oh yeah, yeah good okay point. sport mode. Now listen, just I'm I'm, gonna, I'm I'm it's hard for me. I'm gonna be quiet. Genuinely, hey. why why does this sound that good? Well, the first time I drove it, I put my foot in it to get around an 18-wheeler on, on the highway, and I, I literally was surprised. I was like, wait, that, that's I'm making that noise in this? <laughs> that's me? Seriously. I mean, the A-Spec package has the pipes that suggest, I mean, they're not bigger than normal, but it suggests something. And it, it just, I, I wouldn't buy this without the A-Spec package, despite the price. Yeah. I've actually gotten looks in this car. I mean, granted, they're by... You know, dads and you know, going, huh? Family. Is your seven seat any better than mine? Because mine sucks. What is that? And and some other people on the street corner. I'm, I'm thinking inexplicably. Why are you looking at my SUV? What, yeah, you, you have no business in because that's all, my SUV. That's all that's being sold. I, I wonder if those same people, if you've been sitting at the light of the NSX, they would have just kept looking straight ahead or at their phone because they <laughs> don't even they're care. Like, they're only looking at SUVs. Look those people only look at seven seaters. That's all they exactly. care about. Yeah, exactly. But here's one that is genuinely cool. Here we go again. Come on. Downshift? Uh, no, I actually didn't. I just put my foot in it. Okay. It is piped in. It's the ASC sound. It is piped in. But I'm fine with that. 
I like it, it. It should, honestly, it should not sound this good. Ooh, the downshift was nice. Yes. Yes. Ah. You're hanging on. Are you in sport mode? I'm in sport mode. Okay, good thing. I'm at, I'm at an arrestable speed for this portion of the freeway. I, well, okay, maybe not arrestable. <laughs> I, I, I'm at stern talking to speed. <laughs> exactly. I'm at stern talking to like, speed. Sir, where do you need to get to? I'm yes. at that speed right now. Yes, you might get some snark from the officer a yes. little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm telling you. The kids were late. It was band practice. <laughs> Soccer's right after that. I got like three places to be, Hold officer. Hold it down. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, this is surprising. When he dropped the car off at me, the SUV, and said, you know, sound, this is surprising, I thought, I, I haven't paid much attention to MDXs. I just, mm -hmm. I haven't. And this is surprising us both. Yeah, yeah. And I think, look, this is in that, it's that thing that Acura did when they brought up the original NSX and a lot of their cars. Acura, look, I should have said this earlier, Acura is one of those overlooked brands in the luxury space. I agree. I agree. And I think generally you get a lot for your money and you get more performance than you expect. And this holds that line. So if you're overlooked in any category of anything, you have to be three times better, two times better than your competition to start to be noticed. Is that where we're at? I mean, well, of the I, Q7s and the XC90s and the genuine competitors at this price point, yeah. this has more power. It's just surprising to me. Well, you've hit on it. This is the car that, I, and, and this is a struggle for a brand like Acura. This is a car where, honestly, you should be cross-shopping this with the BMWs yes, and the Mercedes yes. and the Porsches and all of those. You should be cross-shopping it with those. In some cases, it's going to be cheaper than those to you expect them, and you get more for your money. It's above, mm -hmm. look, it's above, obviously, the Pilots and the, it's, and the Acadias no and that doubt. kind of thing. It's, it's above money. those. It's a lot it, of but it's almost in a middle ground price rise between that world and the full-on, you got the X5, you got the kind. It's almost living in a world just yeah. below that. It's a middle ground world. I like that you brought up the Volvo because it's kind of in that world. It is. But I think yeah. you have to be in a world where you don't, you're not concerned about, I have to have a certain badge because most people aren't going to be like, whoa, you got the Acura. Mm -hmm. But I think, mm -hmm. I think that's an asset. I think this is overlooked and it shouldn't be. I also like that they're putting the A-Spec package on everything they're making, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that the NSX need an A-Spec package, but you know what I mean. I'd like that car with more. But who, whoever said that was a yeah. bad thing, you got to pay for it, but whoever said that was bad. It's like MDX, you forgot. 